Hello everybody, my name is Ignacio and since I will be in camp like until next week uh, I'll be making this presentation through this video. Uh, in this video I'll talk about the concept of flexibility and small group discussion planning. Uh, and I think these two things have a lot uh, they have a lot in common because uh, in order to in my experience, in order to conduct a successful small group discussion, you have to have a mental like a mentality of flexibility. You have to be you have to expect for things to go as you don't expect them to go because campers are really unexpected and well in this video I'll try to like share my experience in planning discussions and what I've found that, that has helped me a lot in conducting them successfully. Uh, throughout the small group discussions you're going to notice that the first group discussion is a lot more different than the last group discussion because uh, the first group discussions uh, tend to be more awkward, uh, students tend to be more silent and you're gonna have to facilitate discussions a lot more. Uh, me, like, while the last, like the, the, like the last uh, small group discussion, students are much more comfortable with each other and you're not, you're not gonna have to facilitate the discussions that much. Uh, however, there's gonna be a group uh, dynamic that you're gonna have to establish since the first small group session uh, for kit for students to take this discussion a bit more seriously and that they're also like in an in atmosphere in which they're comfortable talking to each other. Uh, first, to do this, I think that you have to ha build a strong relationship with students since the beginning of camp. Um, you're gonna have to act, I think you have to establish yourself as a figure of authority, but at the same time, I think you should be relatable enough for students to be able to come to you for any kind of situation and for they to be able to trust you. Uh, I think you, should, you shouldn't be like bossing around that much. You should like rather try to be em like have empathy for like any kind of situation which any student might be dealing with and like just sort of like always try to act in a friendly manner for the, em yeah, for the environment to be like really comfortable for everybody in the group. So this is how I prepare mostly for my small disc group, uh, full small group discussions. First, I find it really useful to use music during my this during the sessions because it actually helps a lot uh, loosening the mood and avoiding awkwardness in general. There's no awkward silence. It's really helpful actually, uh, and it's like classical music. It's not like any music that might have lyrics or that students like request because then then that would create a distraction and you know wouldn't go with the flow. For the discussion I first start off by reading the book. You know, I make sure to fully understand the subject, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, and I also analyze the like the recommended procedures to make the the book usually recommends uh, like activities you can do or like questions you might ask. I also analyze that uh, to like create a sort of like a partial outline of what my discussion might look like. Yeah, but after I read the book, after I read the book, I get a blank sheet of paper and I just start writing a bunch of questions. Uh, I like to write. I, I like to write like open questions, no yes or no, just questions in which students might develop, and also questions that are easy for anyone who is present. To relate to and facilitate, you know, and it facilitates their participation. For example, a good question I think might be, like, how has camp, uh, how has camp impacted you this week? Something like that. Like every student in the discussion uh, will be able to actually participate and uh, feel included more easily. <clears throat> I think you can organize an out outline of activities or certain topics you want to discuss but you're going to find out that some, sometimes students don't follow like they don't want to follow uh, your plan or they don't go along with it, what you wanted so you are going to have to implement the flexibility uh, in those occasions you have to you know maybe uh, just skip some points skip some questions uh, as long as students are actually engaged and uh, you want to, you want to keep students be uh, engaged because they tend to get bored sometimes. 
Also, I like to sometimes include games. It might be at the beginning of, of a session, uh, as an icebreaker maybe, or at the end of the session actually went really well and like students are getting tired of just talking. Um, actually, games are really nice. You can play like card games or there's this uh, game called Mafia, which like campers really like. And it actually helps a lot with bonding and just having a, like a good atmosphere at first. And uh, you know, it prevents students from, from not wanting to be there or just to keep them engaged. And so what I think you'll find out and that it's important to understand is that, especially in Jerry, every student is different in thought, completely different in thought and behavior than everybody else, like then, you know, compared to every other student. Um, that this means that every, like every student, every camper will have a different response to any kind of situation than ever, anybody else. Which means that having a flexible mentality is more about uh, not expecting to deal with the same uh, situation always the same way, but rather being open to look things in a different angle, in a different perspective, depending on who you're dealing with. Uh, every group is different. Pulsars, comets, and stars are all different in their behavior. They, you know the moment of their lives, so I think, and so I think, depending on the group you're dealing with, you're also working with, you have to manage yourself differently. But it also comes down comes down to the individual itself. So in the two years I've been working with Jerry, I've had the chance to work with comets and pulsars. Um, these are two entirely opposite groups. For instance, comets they are more explosive, they're more curious, they like to run around, um, they're more imaginative, uh, but I think this also means you should treat them accordingly, you know, you should stimulate their thinking, their problem solving, you should also try to make them work in groups uh, well, because there might be conflicts in personality, they might not know how to handle those things properly, so you might want to make sure that they don't, you know, disrespect another student because of their personality. Um, and I also think you might want to give them certain responsibilities to just give them a sense of responsibility in general. On the other side, uh, there's pulsars. They are more mature. There's hormones floating around. They, they might want to get a girlfriend or a boyfriend. That doesn't happen in comets. Um, they are also much less talkative, they don't talk that much because, and they watch their words more carefully because I think they have like a greater concept of social pressure and social status. Uh, and they're also much more independent, they want, they want to be more independent. Um, for this reason I think you should treat them differently as pulsars for example, you should give them more, uh, more freedoms, you know, maybe when walking or taking them somewhere. They don't want to be carried around like children. Uh, you also should give them maybe a higher level of responsibilities than you would give a comet, for example. And at the same time, you should ensure that they are respecting others and that they're respecting the schedule. They, you know, they might not want to do a certain activity because just they don't, they don't feel like it. Uh, you know, you should try to make them understand that that's, you know, the way camp is organized. So as you can see, it's, you know, it's, you're dealing with two different types of people here, uh, with comets and pulsars.